I like the Cowboys minus three. I'll even lay the juice. I'll lay it down. I'll buy the hook. There's all sorts of debate. Some people say, oh, it's okay to buy the hook. Some people say, no, don't ever do that. I do my own thing. Cowboys minus three at home. They've been crushing people. Jalen Hurts is banged up. I know the Cowboys haven't played great teams at home, but they have been a wagon in Dallas Sunday night. I I like Dallas in a big way here. I do think that's probably the play. And if we are sitting here last week and talking about how situational spots matter for the Eagles, and that's mm-hmm. why we liked the Niners in that game, we can't sit here and say that that's not the case again this week. Because you mm-hmm. look at the stretch that the Eagles have been on, and I think it really showed against the Niners. I don't think the Niners are that much better than the Eagles. It's just situationally they have been in a tough spot. If you look at their last four games, all uh, really mental, uh, mentally grinding games, starting back mm-hmm. to that game against the Cowboys. One score win, 28-23. Then you go on the road to Arrowhead. It is a come from behind win for the Eagles, 21-17. Then you go to overtime against the Bills. Then you get absolutely uh, skull crushed by the 49ers, <laughs> um, 42-19. to So it just feels like the Eagles are being absolutely worn down. Like if they had a chance to take a bye week here, I feel like they would really enjoy it, but no time to prepare. It's time for your division rival in the Cowboys. And especially this game is in Dallas. We know the Cowboys have been much better at home this season. Dak Mm -hmm. Prescott has much better numbers across the board when playing in Dallas. So it does feel like the Cowboys are the play. At minus three, three and a half does make me nervous. Who ruins my teaser so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna give you three teams you have the luxury of sitting back relaxing and then telling me who ruins it so the teams are these i'm gonna start with the Bengals. it is a little reactionary and this line is off the board of bet mgm right now but you can get the Bengals plus one across most sports books so if you put them in a teaser you've got the Bengals getting seven points at home to the Colts. Mm, feels like I like that one a lot. We saw the passing mm-hmm. attack last night for the Bengals. Maybe Jake Browning is not elite like we saw last night. Completion percentage, um, I think, was like 74, which is wild. Leads the NFL in completion percentage now. But still, I think they can keep it within seven uh, between them and the Colts. I am not a believer in the Colts. They should have lost to my Titans. Uh, but they did not. So that is leg number one, the Bengals plus seven. Leg number two, we're going to the Texans. The line is six and a half. You put it in a teaser, it's down to minus a half. Basically, the Texans just have to win against the Jets. Do I need to say more? The Jets have all kinds of quarterback drama. They don't know who's going to be playing. Zach Wilson is, you know, I guess still there. But still, that's not an offense I believe in. I believe in this Texans offense. And also, the Texans' run defense is actually pretty solid. Great win over the Broncos last week. But my final leg is going to be that very team. I'm going to take the Broncos plus 8.5 at the Chargers. Do we believe the Chargers are going to blow out anybody at this point? I don't think so. It feels Mm -hmm. a little trappy because I think most people will probably be overreacting to what was maybe the worst offensive game we have seen in the NFL thus far, a 6 nothing win by the Chargers over the Patriots. But still, I think the Broncos can keep it close. They want to run the ball and run down the clock. I think they can keep it within eight points against the Chargers, who like to also charger at the end of games. So that's going to be my teaser. We're going Bengals plus seven, Texans minus mm-hmm. a half, Broncos plus eight and a half. So, Jenks, who ruins my teaser i think it could be the Bengals. could be just because look that was a great game last night that was an incredible performance from jake browning but also the Bengals a week before lost to the steelers 16 10 so which jake browning will we get and the colts are playing very good football right now quietly they're just Keep winning games, finding ways to win. So I like the teaser. I think it's probably the right side. But also there is a possibility that Jake Browning reverts to the mean somewhat and then they run into a Colts team Colts team that's very hot right now. I think that's the one sabotage factor. 
I think I'd push back a little bit on the Colts playing good football right now. I had to watch the Titans and Colts game. Yeah. I don't think there was a lot of good football being played. Uh, the Titans should have won that game. They missed an extra point. That's why the game went to overtime because Ryan Tannehill had to be the holder. He had not been mm-hmm. a holder since, I think, his freshman year in college. So kind of a lot yeah. of wonky things in that Titans game that maybe you put a little asterisk on that Colts win. The team that I'm most ner- nervous about is the Broncos. Do you think this Broncos team kind of reverts back to the mean in some regard? And do you think the Chargers at some point are going to have an offense? This is mind-blowing to me. How do you have Justin Herbert as your quarterback and you put up a total of six points? Just last week, he was 16-1. to And I think the narrative is Brock Purdy has so much talent around him that people don't want to consider him for MVP. But right now, the Niners look like the best team in football. And if you look at the numbers, Brock Purdy has a very compelling case. He is leading the league in completion percentage, air yards, yards per attempt, any way you slice it. Brock Purdy is putting up great numbers across the board. But mentally, I don't know what it is. There's a block for me that just says, okay, Mm -hmm. Brock Purdy is great, but... Have you seen what Debo Samuel does after the catch? Have you seen what Christian McCaffrey does after the catch? Right. Hell, even Brandon Ayuk after the catch. So mm-hmm. I just, I see the numbers, but my mind is not comprehending it. Are you on the same train of thought with me? Or do you say, hey, the numbers are there. Brock Purdy deserved to be MVP. Here's the thing. I think it's time to come around to the idea that Brock Purdy is a very good quarterback, an exceptional quarterback. Let me give you an example here. When people knock Brock Purdy, what do they say? Oh, he's got so many weapons around him. Debo Samuel, Christian McCaffrey. What do you think Tua has down in Miami? Tua Tungo-Vailoa. I mean, my God, if it's not Tyree Kill, it's Jalen Waddell, Devon Mm Achan. I mean, it's just one stud after the other. During his peak days with the Chiefs, and his not his peak days, but the Chiefs when they had all of that when Tyreek was playing for the Chiefs, for the love of God. And and look at look at Joe Burr in Cincinnati having a stud like Jamar Chase. They great quarterbacks in this league, especially when they step up to the next level, often have great weapons that they play alongside. And yes, the Niners have more weapons than most, but you still have to get those weapons to football. And Brock Purdy is doing it. We're not saying this about Tua. Tua has as many weapons as anyone. And full credit, he's playing lights out. He's taking advantage of those weapons. Brock Purdy is taking advantage of those weapons. So why is it that one guy gets a pass and another guy doesn't? And I think this is where narratives come in, Chelsea, where you see Brock Purdy and he's Mr. Irrelevant and he he falls into a perfect situation for a young guy And we think, yeah, he's got weapons. Yeah, he's got weapons. He keeps winning games. He was lights out against the Eagles. The Eagles have a great defense. Brock Purdy carved up that Eagles defense. Someone still has to throw the football. And then what happens? He has an exceptional game. And people say, ah, well, you know, he's got weapons. Yeah. A lot of the great quarterbacks in the NFL do have great weapons around them. It helps them elevate their game. So I don't know if I would put him in the top tier of quarterbacks in the NFL, but the idea that he is not an exceptional quarterback in the NFL, I just think has been proven wrong.